how to heal anxious attachment. Now this is, this is a big one. If you feel like you're very anxious, you're overthinking, you're self-sabotaging, your mindset's all over the place and you feel like, well, how, how am I supposed to have a relationship? Every time it gets good, I run away. Guys, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jake Maddock. I've coached thousands of people. I'm a relationship coach, coach people all around the world. I wanna help you achieve a 10 out of 10. Now, one of the things, I actually covered this at a group call. So in my program, we do three group calls a day, a week, sorry. I did, I did a group call this morning where I covered default settings, right? Because a lot of girls were complaining on there, coach probably 70, 80% women. A lot of the women were complaining that they were, when it got really good, they were running away. They were, they were nervous that it was so good. They want to achieve a 10 out of 10, they meet a 10 out of 10 partner, but then they feel scared and they want to run away. They have this anxious type of attachment. How do we get rid of this? How do we, what I call this is a default setting, okay? Default setting, we all have this set level of where we're at. So we have a default level of standard in all areas, how we dress, how much money we earn, how much money's in our bank account, how the quality of our relationships, all of it. We have this default setting. Some Someone's default setting is a 10 out of 10, or it might be a million dollars in the bank. Other people's default setting is a thousand dollars in the bank. If it gets to 1200, they'll spend 200 to get it down. If it gets to 500, they'll quickly make it back up to a thousand. That's their default standard setting. Everyone has it in all areas. Some people's default setting in relationships is a five out of 10. Some people's is a seven out of 10. Mine is minimum a nine out of 10, okay? If it gets to a nine out of 10, I go, oh, I gotta do something, it must improve a little bit, okay? Now it, goes, it can go for, a, a good relationship can go for a 10 out of 10 to a nine out of 10 like this. It's not too bad. But if it goes down to a seven, you go on 10, seven, 10, seven, it's too much. And we've all been in those toxic relationships where it goes from a 10 to a one, 10, one, and that's just an absolute roller coaster nightmare. You don't want that, obviously. From a 10 to a nine, 10 to a nine over and over again, it's not too bad. It's not too bad, but that's because you have a high standard. So you can know, well, as soon as it gets down to a nine, you go, I got to do something that's not acceptable. Okay, how do you change your default setting? Because your default setting is in line with how you grew up, your parents, whatever, that sort of stuff. Okay, so how do you make your default setting go up? Well, you got to learn a few things. So people in my program, they told me, I said, what makes, your pro what makes your default setting go up? And they said, well, you made it go up. You told us you only do high value dates and that made it go up. I put the default setting on them. So you could do the same thing and go, well, if a guy wants to see me, he's got to take me on a high value date. That's a minimum. Sure, great, done. That's a great way to make it go up because subconsciously what you're doing there is you're telling yourself, I deserve a 10 out of 10. I'm not going to settle for less than a high value date. If a guy wants to see me, it must be a high value date. If it's a low value date, I simply will not go. And that's about having that high standard, okay? And another thing is when people say they're anxious attachment, it often to do with uh, setting boundaries, hard conversations, stuff like that. If you feel like you hate the idea of hard conversations or setting a boundary, we need to do something about it. We need to do something about it now, ASAP, because it's not, that's no good. We gotta fix that, okay? How do we fix that? Well, we do it a few ways, okay? You need to get good at setting boundaries really fast. The instant you feel some sort of disrespect, you fix it, okay? You go, you go when they say something disrespectful, you go, hold on, I don't like that. Don't do that. And then you change the subject. You gotta get good at setting boundaries, okay? How do you get good at setting boundaries if you feel so anxious all the time? You gotta give yourself some reassurance, okay? Give yourself some affirmations, give yourself some reassurance. Hey, it's good I'm setting boundaries. I deserve to set boundaries. And when I set a boundary, I'm teaching that person how to have a relationship with me. When I set a boundary, I'm teaching that person how to have a relationship with me. When I have a hard conversation with somebody, I'm actively, intentionally improving the relationship. When I, when I have a hard conversation with my partner, I'm actively and intentionally improving our relationship for the future. Tell yourself these sentences, it will help. Okay, having a hard conversation can sometimes feel quite, makes you feel quite anxious. That's normal, okay, it's full on. You, you feel like there's a lot of risk. Tell yourself that you're actively and intentionally making moves to improve your relationship for the future. That makes a big difference. As you can see guys, healing the anxious attachment, improving your default setting, making sure your future is good and making sure you're a 10 out of 10 within who you are has a lot to do with the words we say. 
The words we say are of the utmost importance. It's very, very important. Most people tell themselves the wrong words. Look around. But when you really start paying attention with this, you'll actually see that so many people say the wrong words all the time. It's absolutely crazy, super unhealthy. So what you need to do is you need to tell yourself the right words. What are the right words? Well, some of the wrong words are, I have anxiety, I have depression, I'm never gonna find anyone, I'm a loser, who would like me, I gotta I got lose 20 kilos before I go on a date, blah, 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 blah. All these negative beliefs and negative reassurance over and over and over again, really, really bad. What do you say instead? Well, you gotta reframe. You gotta reframe some of those sentences. Reframing those sentences are a great game changer. So for example, I have anxiety. Sometimes I feel anxious. So instead, I have anxiety, and you're putting the ownership on yourself, sometimes I feel anxious. And look, is it perfectly normal and human to feel anxious sometimes? Of course it is, it's a normal human emotion, okay? Reframe, I have depression. Sometimes I feel sad, great. Perfectly normal, yeah? I'm never gonna find anybody. I will find my ideal partner if I do the work and date properly and have high standards and put myself out there effectively, okay? I, I won't date until I lose 20 kilos. My ideal partner will like me for who I am now and I am constantly and always improving myself for a better future, okay? Because it's true, you, you should be trying to improve yourself from the day you're born to the day you die, okay? As you can see guys, if you reframe the words you say to yourself, your total, your brain changes. You've got to reframe those words. That has a lot to do with this anxiety and this anxiousness that so many people feel. If you're feeling particularly anxious all the time and you just feel, you're just getting in your head and you're overthinking, you're self-sabotaging, but telling yourself the right words. You deserve a 10 out of 10, guys. Your parents may have not had a 10 out of 10. They may not have. Your sister and your brother, your cousins, they may not have 10 out of 10 relationships either. Your best friend may not have a 10 out of 10 doesn't matter. You can have a 10 out of 10. You really want to achieve a 10 out of 10 relationship. The key is don't settle. People who don't will never have a 10 out of 10 is because they settle for the 7 out of 10. They have a mediocre, okay relationship and that's it. Not enough to improve, not enough to leave it, but just it's okay. Not for me. Don't settle and don't give up. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. Okay? Go on one day a week. You go on one day a week, after six months, you'll be in a 10 out of 10. If they're all high value and you're learning as long along the way as you, as you go, because that's, you know, six months, that's 26 dates. Yeah, you go on 26 dates, you got a pretty high chance of finding someone pretty great. Now your job's not to blow it. Another thing which lowers anxiety, guys, is learning, learning skills, okay? For example, say you feel a particularly level of anxiety on public speaking, right? Because you don't have much experience. As your experience goes up, your knowledge goes up and your confidence also goes up and your insecurity goes down, just simply from doing it more. <clears throat> Another analogy, you may feel a certain sense of anxiety when you're first learning how to drive a car, okay? You have no idea what's happening, everything's going crazy, it's super scary, it's the first time you're doing it. The more you drive though, your knowledge of the task goes up, anxiety goes down, confidence goes up. Simple, right? It's the same with dating. The more you date, the more comfortable and more charismatic you're gonna get, the better energy you're gonna have, okay? So you gotta practice, that's why we go only one date a week, okay? You gotta tell yourself, I deserve a 10 out of 10, I only do high value dates, I'm a high value person and a good catch and a good partner. And do the practice, say the right words, and you'll be absolutely fine. You'll be absolutely fine, guys. You can do it, okay? You can do it. Guys, while I remember, please comment and like this video. Please share it, comment it, click the bell. I really appreciate it, it means a lot to me. A lot of you guys have, a lot of you guys are watching a lot of my videos, you're watching my YouTube shorts, you're reading my book, you're doing all sorts of stuff, which is fantastic. You're, you're improving, you're improving. I struggled so much in my 20s with relationships. What a nightmare. I hated my 20s. So many years was just absolutely a nightmare simply from the fact that I didn't understand relationships. I picked the wrong people to be in relationships with and it was just a complete nightmare. It was really, really bad. Do your self-improvement. Learn what you like. Learn what you don't like. Learn how to be a master of relationships. Learn masculine and feminine energy. Learn how to effectively communicate. 
learn how to raise attraction, learn how to do this stuff that I talk about because it's gonna make your life 10 times better, okay? I truly believe that becoming a master of relationships is by far the best skill you ever learn, by far. You could get a degree in mechanical engineering, you could become a doctor, you could do whatever you want. That's all fine, but I still think becoming a master of relationships is the best one. It's such a big part of life. Romantic relationships is huge. If you don't have a good romantic relationship, I can't see how your life's gonna be very happy. It's such, it's so important. It brings us so much happiness. Get really good, learn how to do romantic relationships properly, guys. Look, if you need more help, go to my website, book in a call, mattercoaching.com, book in a call, send me a message on social media, whatever. I'm here to help. I've coached thousands of people. I wanna help you too. I do a certain number of free calls a day. I do about 10 free calls a day myself. Once the 10 are gone, they're gone. I only have time for that many, okay? so. Book in a free call, send me a message, I'm here to help.